Hi folks, my name is Alfonso, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own embedded wallet experience using smart wallets inside your web application. Why would you want to do that? Well, smart wallet don't require the use of pass freeze, transaction prompts, or gas fees, plus many other benefits that are coming with modularity. They allow you to have an experience like this one where you can just click to mint an NFT. The user gets asked to confirm with their touch ID or whatever biometrics they have on their device, and voila. A transaction has been executed on chain. No need to think about passes or anything else like that. And you can see the NFT has been minted here. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be following uh, this quick start that's hosted on the Crossman website. To get started, we're going to create a new project in the Crossman website. We're going to go to staging.crossman.com slash console, create a new project. Let's call it Smart Wallet Web App. And make sure that you select you're going to be using Smart Wallets. And the other thing we're going to be doing is creating an API key, which is how we tell our website which project to use in the Crossman side. It's going to be a client-side API key because it's used from the browser. Uh, we're going to be running it in localhost port 3000. So I need to add that as an authorized origin. And I need to use enable the permissions to read the wallets, create the wallets. And also we're going to be creating users because we're going to have them logging in. So I'm going to enable that as well. We'll need this API key later, so be sure to save it in a safe place. Okay, and we're ready to start writing some code. I'm going to call it uh, Smart Wallets Web App. I'm just going to use all the defaults here. Now we have it created. I'm going to go in. Smart Wallets Web App. And um, I'm going to do two things before we get started. I'm going to install the Crossman React SDK. And I'm going to create a .amp.local file for environment variables, where we're going to be storing our API key that we created in the previous step. It's perfectly safe to put these API keys on the client side, because they're client side ready. And then the last thing we're going to do before getting started is we're going to create a scaffold copied from the documentation uh, in our home page, where we're going to be putting all the wallet code. With this, if you do npm run dev, you can already start seeing a very basic website where we're going to be adding auth and wallet. So the next step is we're going to add some React providers to configure Crossman authentication and the project. So to do this, I'm going to create providers.providers.tsx. And here, what we're doing is this Crossman provider configures all of Crossman's SDKs with an API key, the one we've added in the environment local file. And this auth provider configures authentication, a login system using Crossman. Uh, of worth noting, you can configure authentication so that it creates wallets as the user logs in. So this is what we're doing here. We are creating a login wallets for all users with the default chain set to Polygon Amoy testnet and their EVM smart wallets. And we're going to be adding this uh, providers file inside our layout. You want to put it at the highest level possible within your application to make sure that your wallet and authentication system are accessible to the rest of the application. Cool. Uh, with the providers already created, the next thing we're going to do is adding the authentication button. Uh, so we're going to import the authentication use auth hook from the Crossman client SDK. And we're going to create a very simple authentication button. It's a button that says log in or log out, depending on whether the user is logged out or logged in. And we're just going to add this in the first to do. If we now go to the browser, you'll see we have a login button. But let's not click on it yet. Let's add the wallet UI first. So we're going to add use wallet to the import. And then we're going to create a very basic wallet component that just shows the wallet address or loading and error messages if there have been an error. And then we add this here. And so here's what's going to happen. Because we configure authentication to create wallets on their behalf, when the user goes and clicks login, it's automatically going to try to create a wallet and load it. And you'll see. Click here. We log in. And it says, hey, create a passkey to create a wallet associated with the device. So I use Touch ID. And boom, now my wallet is secured with my fingerprint. And it works across devices. I can go to my phone and access the same wallet as well. 
And this is the wallet address. If you log out, the wallet is cleared. And if you log in again, the wallet you will see is available without even having to use fingerprint. Your fingerprint will be needed next time you do an operation. With that, we've been able to create a wallet in under five minutes, which has full gas sponsorship, no transaction prompts, and is secured by the most advanced and sophisticated authentication system right now that exists, which is Passkeys that Google and Apple are investing millions of dollars in. Check out the documentation for next steps, how to send transactions and do other interesting stuff with your wallets.